This place is the definition of what a luxurious urban hotel without a ridiculous price should be. In-room comfort and food on offer are the top priorities here. We've got a full tour coming up, so welcome to Dubai. If you're new here, I'm Kevin, the Flip Flop Traveler. If I want you to know one thing, it's that the opinions in this video are honest and my own. If you'd like to know more about what, how, and why I do what I do, scan the QR code to read more. Have a look around the channel. There are hundreds of flight and hotel reviews to watch. This St. Regis review starts right now. Downtown Dubai, it's a bit of a misnomer. When I think of downtown, I think of bustling streets, eateries, parks, and a whole lot more. Downtown Dubai though, at least this part of it, feels more like one of those business districts that empties out completely outside of business hours. That said, location is a very personal thing, and if you find yourself at the St. Regis, my guess is either it's exactly where you needed to be, or you were booking through Amex and thought this was the best bang for your buck in Dubai. Either way though, let's head inside. This hotel, with its 289 rooms, opened in October of 2021. The immediate lobby area, which you walk into, is actually fairly small. But all you're ever going to be doing in this area is getting checked in. So just head around the corner and you'll find yourself in the stunning lobby lounge, the library. The design here is said to include rich fabrics and gold accents and draw inspiration from the jewelry found in Dubai's gold souk. The artwork is inspired by Dubai's skyline, reflecting into the Dubai Water Canal. I booked with Amex Fine Hotels and Resorts, which sometimes includes an early check-in, but it was all business here. Check-in time was 3 p.m., as I was told matter-of-factly, so I waited pretty comfortably in here for a couple of hours. And I'm glad that I did, because it really did demonstrate why this hotel is here. I generally film early in the morning to avoid other guests, but let me tell you, this place gets packed in the afternoons with equal representation from those coming for afternoon tea and the suits coming for a business meeting. Let's head upstairs to the pool area, which overlooks the Dubai Canal, and I can tell you a bit about St. Regis, since this is the first time I featured one of them on the channel. The original St. Regis, named after the Upper St. Regis Lake in the Adirondacks, is in New York, on the corner of 55th and 5th. It was opened by John Jacob Astor IV, and was meant to be the sister property of sorts to the original Waldorf Astoria Hotel, which was later demolished to build the Empire State Building. The original St. Regis brought many things to the hotel scene back then. In addition to the tons of marble and bronze which adorned the interiors, it was also famous for having a telephone in each room, and was later the birthplace of the Bloody Mary. I'm not quite sure that the downtown Dubai version will live up to all of that, but it's nice to know the history as it explains a lot of the subtle design cues throughout the property. As for the pool, I think it's actually a clever design, mostly covered but with just a bit out in the sun. Attendants were a plenty, and if you squeeze a peek around the corner, you can get a nice view of the Burj Khalifa as well. If you enjoy Middle East content, check out the playlist linked above and in the description below for all of my Middle East flight and hotel content. Also in the description, you'll always find my next five videos to come out. Speaking of the Burj, let's quickly look at where we are. From Dubai's international airport, it's an easy 10 to 15 minute drive without traffic, and despite its quiet streets, it really is well located to reach all of Dubai by car. The reason I say by car is the distances can be deceiving when looking at maps of Dubai, particularly because blocks are irregular, but also the city just is not designed for walking. The Burj Khalifa, for example, it's a super quick four minute drive away. But if you would like to walk that, plan a half hour. I should also mention, this is referred to as the St. Regis downtown Dubai because there is another St. Regis on the Palm. 
On the ground level, the library lounge opens out onto the Dubai Canal. And I'd like to apologize for the cloudy weather. It was often suspected, but has now been scientifically proven that every time I visit the UAE, it rains. Okay, let's go have a tour of my room. I booked a superior room and was upgraded to a deluxe room with a canal view at check-in. The rooms are spacious and plush with a unique layout that takes advantage of the room's depth. As we take a look around, I'll put up the extra bits, but I'd be remiss if I didn't devote at least 20 seconds to the bed in here. According to my thesaurus, serene and sumptuous are the words befitting this masterpiece of sleep technology. The mattress was firm but supportive, and the linens were heavenly. Crisp but not stiff, soft but not flimsy. I digress. I did also appreciate the really long desk area with the mirror above disguising the TV. As you walk into the room, this feature really draws your eye inwards and towards the view. It was on autoplay. I was multitasking. I was feeding my falcon. These are all real reasons, kinda, why I often forget to click the like button on videos that I actually did appreciate existing. So anytime a video creator asks me to click that like button and subscribe, I do it because I know if I don't do it in that moment, I'm gonna forget. Grassroots support is what keeps channels going, more so than any algorithm ever could. So if you enjoy this video today, please be sure to click all the buttons, but just the good ones. My Patreon is also linked in the description below. Thanks very much. The bathroom layout, I think you're either going to love it or hate it, and this is where they kind of lost me. I love the finishes and the fixtures, but I think the layout just felt really awkward. I wish there was a space for the shower next to the toilet room, freeing up space for a larger vanity and a more thoughtfully placed tub. The tub that's in here now kind of felt like it was in the middle of a hallway. Not sure if they're between suppliers or what, but the products on offer were a mishmash of seemingly whatever they had on hand. The minibar area has a nice selection of teas and an espresso pod machine which was appreciated. Though only offering a single caffeinated pod did feel a bit cheap, though they gladly gave more, just say. Near the entrance to the room, we have a very unique layout for a large walk-in closet. To me, doesn't matter, but I can imagine how some would prefer to have a door here, so you don't walk into your room and instantly see a closet in disarray. As we check out the view, let me quickly mention the service. The check-in process was cold and just off-putting. But after that point, everything was great. I had a small concern with housekeeping. It was a one-off and not really worth mentioning. But it was dealt with swiftly and followed up with by the housekeeping manager and again at checkout by the front desk manager as well. 
it was clear that my check-in experience was not the norm here. Where the service was actually the best though was during my two meals. Just really attentive servers at dinner who knew their stuff and were happy to share suggestions naturally and in a very conversational manner. Dinner was at Tabu, which is a modern Japanese restaurant. Now, when I was there, I distinctly remember there was more of a fusion menu with distinct sections for more Japanese dishes and more Middle Eastern dishes. So I don't see my starter on this menu anymore but it was an incredible smoked and glazed eggplant with sesame, almonds, and lebna. It was out of this world. For the main, I had one of the more unique and equally delicious fish dishes that I think I've ever had. It was wood-fired mackerel served with pickles and dill, which was deboned at the table. Alongside, I had sweet potato wedges. Overall, this was an outstanding meal. Just adjacent to Tabu is the St. Regis Bar, which is a moody and intimate space. And that'll do it for the night. In the morning, I headed to Basta, which is their Italian restaurant, but also where you'll find the breakfast buffet. You can notice the shutters above, that's the St. Regis Bar. At breakfast, the manikish wasn't ready yet, during my first pass. I didn't say anything, but I guess the chef saw me take note. Not five minutes later, he personally brought over a slice of the cheese and the za'atar, noting that I might have wanted a piece. Uh, I just remembered as I'm writing this now, I have a new thing that I'm gonna be including in all hotel and resort reviews going forward. Actually, it's an idea that came directly from my most recent viewer survey. Stick around for the end of this buffet tour to see my full ranking of every breakfast that's ever been on the channel, and where today's breakfast at the St. Regis fits into that list. There are a whopping 145 other hotels to compare it to. As for the buffet, it's a great mix and one of my favorite styles of buffet. It's one that doesn't try too hard. It's not trying to please every single person that could ever walk through the doors. But the things that it does offer, it does really well. There's also an a la carte egg menu, which serves up some really good eggs benedict. A quick note about my breakfast rankings. Just remember that these are obviously my own opinions. Personally, I prefer quality and cookery over quantity and decoration. I don't take the price of the hotel or breakfast into consideration, but, but I do consider whether that breakfast is worthy of or exceeds the standards for the brand that it represents. The St. Regis downtown Dubai is coming in at a solid number 38. Last thing I'll mention about the list and why I love the idea. I think it gives you as the viewer an insight into how hotels around the world that I've ranked compare and what I expect from them. For example, the Grand Fiesta Americana Coral Beach in Cancun was the best breakfast that I had in Cancun, and that's true. But here, it's currently number 28. Every video I make is within the context of that hotel in that market. My final thoughts. Is this St. Regis calling my name loudly enough to return? No. But that's not because it's not a fantastic hotel. It's because there are 2,000 other options in Dubai to try. If you need to be in this area and you're new to Dubai and don't mind driving everywhere, which frankly you need to do for 90% of Dubai anyway, then this might be a really nice and comfortable place to spend some time. So I hope that you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please be sure to click that like button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on my twice weekly videos. Oh wait, did I say twice weekly? This week, it's actually four. I'll see you next time for a quick video that will introduce the journey we'll be on over the next couple of months. As always, thanks for watching until the end.